Well, good morning to all of you from uh, Portland, Oregon. Let me start by saying thank you uh, to President Stephen Ray and to everyone here at Chicago Theological Seminary for this recognition. Receiving the 2020 Distinguished Alumni from CTS for me is um, like winning the Oscar. I appreciate so very much uh, that my friend and partner in crime, the Reverend Dr. Susan Thistlewaite, thought to nominate me. It is an honor um, to also be invited to give a reflection uh, to you all here today. Of course, we gather in the midst of a difficult time for our nation and our world. Not only do we face a global pandemic, but we also grieve another African-American life lost senselessly at the hands of police. In response, people have appropriately taken to the streets. Most protests, of course, have been nonviolent, but not all. What we experience today should challenge our understandings of faith and the role of the church in the world universal. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King lamented in a sermon entitled Guidelines for a Constructive Church that the church is not an entertainment center, although some people believe that it is. Monkeys are to entertain, not preachers. Too many church are still acting as entertainment centers today. When you're active on social media, as I am, feedback comes as fast as lightning. For example, upset over my assertion on Twitter earlier this week that Jesus came to free people from oppression and that we should follow that example, a gentleman from Virginia wrote to me that Jesus did not come to free people from oppression. Not at all, he said. In a time where so many are oppressed, either by a virus that has highlighted systemic issues of racism within our society or by police violence. It's important to remember that Jesus was, in fact, deeply concerned about the oppression of his own time. In the Gospel of Luke, we read what is oftentimes called Jesus' inaugural sermon. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He enrolled the scroll and found that place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. In response, probably hearing Jesus' words as the words of a thug, the people of Nazareth attempted to throw Jesus off a cliff. What we read in Luke is a story in which Jesus firmly plants himself in the prophetic tradition of the Hebrew scriptures. Jesus aligns himself with the prophets of the Christian Old Testament, the same prophets who challenged the political structures and conventional wisdom of their own time. In his book, The Social Principles of Jesus, Walter Rauschenbusch reminds us that Jesus clearly takes sides with the lowly. He says, God and the future are not on the side of the rich, the devotees of pleasure, the people who take the popular side on everything. Ultimately, says Rauschenbusch, the verdict will be for those who are now poor and underfed, who carry the heavy end of things, and who have to stand up on the unpopular side. The message that God stands with the oppressed is central to Christianity but so often not lived out by our churches or individual Christians. This is why I put on my collar this week and with my daughters, joined protesters in Portland the day before yesterday. It is vital as the powers and principalities of our day summon troops, attack all protesters as thugs in an effort to delegitimize very legitimate rage and advance policies that further oppress people in our society, that clergy and the church stand visible to remind us all that this is not the world that God intends for us. There is another path. Howard Thurman, writing of Jesus, said, whenever his spirit appears, the oppressed gather flesh, fresh courage, for he anointed the good news that fear, hypocrisy, and hatred the three hounds of hell that track the tra trail of the disinherited need have no dominion over them. 
this is the message that we should be sharing with others now and always. While sharing this message, it is worth acknowledging that there are other messages that are out there. Yesterday, was it really just yesterday? The White House ordered that all peaceful and lawful protesters outside of the gates of the People's House be targeted with tear gas to clear a path so that Donald Trump could stand in front of St. John's Church with a Bible for a photo op. Many faith leaders offered critical words for the president. Even Pat Robertson this morning offered critical words for the president, but not Robert Jeffries, one of the President Trump's evangelical advisors. Dr. Jeffries is pastor of First Baptist Church in Dallas. He told The Atlantic yesterday, I thought it was completely appropriate for the president to stand in front of that church. And by holding up the Bible, he was showing that it teaches us that yes, God hates racism. It's despicable, but God also hates lawless, lawlessness. All of us, I hope, advance the idea that the most authentic expression of Christianity models the radical, nonviolent message preached by Jesus himself. But God does not hate lawlessness. God hates oppression. When God called Moses to deliver God's people from the oppression of Egypt, Moses undertook illegal acts against the state. Rome accused Jesus of lawlessness. And Paul, and Dr. King, who led the civil rights movement, he was accused of lawlessness, as was that movement. Sometimes fidelity to God means challenging the laws of man. Lisa Sharon Harper tweeted earlier this week, Dear world, listen to our uprising. Our babies are speaking to you. If we cannot hear those voices, if we do not respond to those cries by bringing the church out of the sanctuary and even off of Zoom, are we really followers of Jesus at all? To close, let me end with words that are sustaining me in this season of life. They come from Star Trek's Captain Pike. Be bold, be brave, be courageous. Peace be with you all. Thank you so much.